All right, so she made it home and uh, back to the shop with absolutely no issues, no problems. She ran great and uh, I'm really happy. So, uh, the only thing is uh, she's running a little bit too high RPMs. So uh, we're gonna try to adjust that now. We're gonna try to tune up the carbs a little bit. But uh, before that we should, oh my God, it's raining. Good thing I made it on time. <laughs> oh wow, look at that. <laughs> Just 10 minutes ago I was still driving outside. <laughs> wow. They didn't call for rain today at all. It is very hot outside, it is sunny and suddenly rain. <laughs> That's weird. Anyway, so I was saying that um, we're gonna try to tune up the carbs a little bit, but before we do that, we should make sure that our ignition timing is on the perfect spot. Because so far I adjusted it just by ear, but now we should go with a vacuum gauge. So what I did is I disconnected the hose from the anti runoff valve and I connected it to a vacuum gauge and now we're gonna try to adjust the distributor back and forth until we reach the highest level of uh, vacuum and that's where we're gonna leave it. Never done that before, but few people mentioned that already to me that it's uh, the best way to adjust the ignition timing is with the vacuum gauge, so let's try it. Frankly, the highest level of vacuum is where the highest RPM are. <laughs> For me, that makes sense, right? <laughs> Anyways, this is where we're gonna leave it and let's see what we can do about the carbs now. First of all, I wanna state that I'm not a carburetor specialist by any means. I read a little bit, I watch videos and I find to figure, and I try to figure out how it works, how they get tuned. So I'm just gonna try to follow the procedure and uh, let's see if this is gonna work. Okay, so about the high RPMs, I think I figured it out. This shaft, the throttle shaft here, was not returning all the way. Even now it doesn't return all the way. Uh, so you see I added this spring here and a spring over there temporarily so it returns. Because you see this little thing, there's just a little bit more that it can come, but if it doesn't, even now it doesn't come all the way back with the spring, but when you let go uh, like faster, it comes back. So obviously these springs here are really loose, so I'm gonna have to deal with that later. But for now I just added those temporary springs here and that's fine. So uh, the procedure says that we should uh, first split the two carburetors and just separate them by loosening this uh, connection here so I will loosen that and now you see this carburetor moves but the other one is disconnected so they are two separate units now uh, then we're gonna take out the filters, the air cleaners and when we take the air cleaners out we're gonna have to equalize the airflow. Okay, so now let's start the engine and see what the airflow looks like.
which is pretty good actually. So the other way to do that is with a piece of hose. You put one end inside, the other end in your ear and just listen for the hissing and try to equalize the hissing. But if you have the two, that's the best option. So we have a good airflow. So now what we're going to do is we're going to lift a little bit the piston inside on each of them, like uh, 1 16th of an inch. And we'll, hear, we'll listen to the engine noise. If it raises and it keeps going up, this means that we have a uh, too rich mixture. If it uh, stows, it, this means that the mixture is lean. Or if it goes a little bit up and then comes back to normal, this means that we have a perfect mixture. So let's see. This one is too lean. You see, it's trying to die. Let's see the other one. Same thing. Okay, so we need to make the mixture a little bit more rich. So our mixture is very lean and that's what I was thinking too. So now I'm going to show you how to adjust the mixture. So now we have this tool which goes inside and it has a little pin here that locks inside the piston and you have to lock it like Okay, and this way it's not gonna spin and then you have to go with this Allen key and uh, And let me think now when you okay, you know how we have the jet inside and we have the needle and the needle is a cone so The higher the needle the bigger the opening between the jet and the needle and the more fuel goes through, through. This means by lifting the needle up. We're gonna make the mixture more uh, rich. If we push the needle down, we're gonna close the opening, we're gonna reduce the amount of fuel going in and that's gonna make the mixture uh, more lean. So we want to make it richer, so we're gonna have to lift the needle up. This means we have to go clockwise. And I'm gonna go all the way actually. Okay. I'm gonna go all the way and then I'm gonna start going down on both of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now we are all the way up with on both needles. So let's try again. a little bit too rich because it goes up and stays up. But this one goes up and then comes down. No, actually both of them, I'm gonna reduce them by one, I'm gonna reduce one turn. So now we have to go one turn counterclockwise, which is going to bring the needle down. So one turn. Okay, let's try again. I 
think that's it. I think that's pretty much okay. Again, I'm not specialist, but in my opinion, this is uh, pretty good now. So this is where I'm gonna leave them. So now we're gonna lock both cars where with the thing here. Okay, let me put their cleaners and we're gonna go for a ride. This definitely <laughs> works. It's much better now, guys. It's it's perfect actually. Now it's like wow, it goes like crazy. Wow, I'm happy that actually I did it because I didn't expect that I was gonna do a good job with that. But actually, I did a good job. Let me give myself a tap on the shoulder. <laughs> wow, I can't believe that it worked. <laughs> One thing worked for me. Anyways, now that the engine runs well. I think what we should do is uh, we should install the rubber boot underneath here because if you remember, let me show you. If you remember, we didn't install the rubber grommet under here, which is this one. So now, unfortunately, we're going to have to take out everything again, including the dash support, and we're going to and we're gonna try to install the grommet on the transmission cover okay that didn't take long so now that we are here if you recall we were missing one spring here so now we're gonna install the spring first and uh, we're gonna grease everything here and then we're gonna install the grommet It can stay there. So this is the spring. I put a little bit of grease inside. Just so the it it goes in and out easily. And also won't fall. Good. So now there, we need a good amount of grease here. So this holds the cap down 
and these two are locking it so it doesn't turn around. You see how it turns? I don't want to turn it too much because the bolt, the pin might come out from the spring down there. So you notice how on the bow, on the end of this, there are slots, so these need to end up inside the slots. You see now, I go in first and second, third and fourth, and when I have to go to reverse, I have to force it, and this is when the pin goes inside with the spring, you see? And comes up and locks again. Good. So with the carpet on, it's going to be harder, but we're going to manage. You know what's the funny part, guys? The funny part is that it is in. <laughs> All right, actually that was easier than expected. All right, so our list is becoming smaller even though I keep adding, uh, adding things at the bottom, but uh, we still have to do the mirror on the driver's door. I didn't do it today. Maybe I'm going to do that now before I leave. The rocker beads or um, seal beads, whatever you want to call them. The sun visors need to be installed. I have a lot of work in the trunk. I have to install all the panels. Maybe have to make new ones and wrap them or we will see what we're going to do there. Not now. Uh, the washer fluid canister needs to be installed and the windshield wipers, which I don't have. Uh, horn button needs to be installed. The tires need to be changed, but we don't have new tires. Jake is gonna buy uh, red line tires for the car, so for now we're gonna drive with these old ones. Uh, I still miss one screw for the dash. Maybe I'll look around on British Car Day on the flea market. Maybe I can find a screw like that. I need to install the pedal pads and the snaps for the tunnel cover on the doors because I don't have this and not only on the doors but also on the dash you know the little plates there with uh, little snaps so not much oh and i forgot something i need to install the grommets the grommets on the backrests and the seat belt guides this is what I'm talking about. I have to cut holes here, install the grommets, which I already have, install the headrests and the little holders for the seat belts to hold them here. So this still needs to be done too.